I hate to bring it up, but you have been lied to. And you've been lied to over and over and over and over again. You've been lied to about affiliate marketing. And all these people promising you all this overnight money, passive income, they have a serious aversion to the actual truth. Now, I don't know why this is. I don't know why we can't just be honest and give people the realistic truth about affiliate marketing. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna break down the five most common lies that these affiliate marketing gurus make, the truth that actually exists behind those lies, and exactly what you should be doing instead. So let's get right into it. So lie number one, and this is often the most prevalent one, is this timeline to making money, which is a lie. So people talk about overnight, 24 hours, make a bunch of money in seven days, make 10K in 30 days, even some promising a bunch of money in 90 days. It's all clickbait. It's all really just to get people to click on YouTube thumbnails. Everyone does it because that's what people want. Unfortunately, if you search YouTube for affiliate marketing, you're gonna see a ton of quick hacks, ways to make money on ClickBank, things of make money in 24 hours, and a lot of different examples that are just clickbait trying to get you to actually click the video. But first of all, we have to realize that affiliate marketing is a real business. This isn't some scam that we see because of all of these fake videos. But we need to realize it's a real business, but there's actually a lot of numbers behind it. So when we think about the numbers behind it, think of like how much traffic you'd actually need to start making consistent revenue through affiliate marketing. So for example, let's say you get a thousand visitors to a blog post or a thousand uh, viewers on a YouTube video. Well, of those, maybe 30% would click on one of your affiliate links in that content. So now we're down to 300 people. And of that, like 2% of them might buy something through your affiliate link. So now we're talking about six, sales potentially for all of that traffic. Now, if you have a $100 product and a 10% commission, you're making like 10 bucks per sale, maybe $60. So all that work, getting a thousand people to your content and you're making about 60 bucks, which is a little bit better than just posting banner ads on your site. So you need a lot of content. You know, this isn't hard, but it's also not an overnight thing. If you wanna build a real business, think longer term than 24 hours or seven days. Because it's really all about learning, especially if you're a beginner. It took me like eight years to learn all of this affiliate marketing stuff and a digital marketing career and kind of condense it all into teaching. You need a lot of disciplines. You need to learn SEO, blogging, affiliate marketing, promoting your content. You need to build a website. All of these things that actually, you know, the learning process. If you're gonna make money, you need to set up a PayPal account. You, if you're gonna build it into a business, you need a QuickBooks potentially and a business bank account and things that you're just not gonna set up in 24 hours. So we need to extend our timeline, which is fine, and just realize that this takes longer than overnight, 24 hours or seven or 30 days or something like that. And what I would always make sure to do is to research the actual YouTubers that you are listening to. So do they actually have an affiliate marketing business? Do they have income reports on their site? Are they actually making money or are they just making like, a few thousand dollars and then making a ton of money on YouTube promoting how they made a few thousand dollars, right? So if you wanna learn from you know the best, make sure they actually are the best and can back it up with good revenue. You know, my blog's made over a million dollars for the last few years and you know we posted income reports on my blog, now we do it more on YouTube, we talk about the strategies and all of that. So just do your research on who you're listening to because most YouTubers that talk about affiliate marketing don't make more than like $10,000 a month actually doing affiliate marketing. So line number two is that affiliate marketing is passive income. So everyone wants passive income, you know, make some money, do nothing, go live on a beach somewhere, sipping Mai Tais, check on your computer once a month. So affiliate marketing is not passive income. So what's passive about building a website, writing tons of articles, or starting a YouTube channel, creating tons of videos, joining affiliate programs, adding your links in, updating the content, doing link building, all of those things aren't passive. Now, it can become passive, but it takes real work up front. So, you know, I think passive income is kind of like gardening. So you start in the spring or maybe in the early summer, whatever the, you know, plant is, you have to put it in the ground, you do all of these things, and then you have to actually water it, put it in the right spot, make sure that it's growing. You can't just be stagnant and do nothing or it won't grow. So passive income is kind of like that. Like there's nothing 100% passive. You have to actually put work in. With blog posts, it can be quite passive because if you start ranking for a really valuable affiliate keyword, then you can maintain those rankings for years and not do a ton of work. So it's just like, yes, you're not 
getting an hourly wage with affiliate marketing, you can make affiliate sales while you're doing other things, so that can become passive. But we need to realize that passive income isn't always what it's cracked up to be. Like active income can actually be a good thing. If you put work in up front, and it's gonna take a lot of work, you can get the reward later when it's not attached to your time. So it can be passive, but you really, you know, to understand how this all works, make sure to click the link in the description below, watch the free masterclass, 80 minutes of training on, you know, how to start a blogging business doing it this way, just to see if it's something that you're interested in. You know, I remember learning about passive income back in like 2008. I didn't take any action for 11 years because I didn't actually know what to do. So really, when you think about this passive income in this world, yes, it exists, but it requires a ton of work up front. And that's why a lot of people quit because they're not guaranteed for it to work, right? If we're putting in 10 hours a week for six months to build an affiliate marketing business, we wanna be like pretty sure that it's gonna work, right? So there's ways and strategies that I'll talk about in this video to make sure that we don't fail. But that's the second lie, is that affiliate marketing is passive income. Today's video is sponsored by Uscreen. Now Uscreen is the internet's best all-in-one membership platform for video creators. And it's now even easier to turn your love for making videos into a real business without all of those tech headaches. A great thing about Uscreen is how easily you can connect with your audience. So they feature a Netflix-style experience, which helps your members discover new content or they can binge watch their favorite videos plus with their membership plus features you can easily create recurring subscriptions so charge every month and create exclusive video content for your biggest fans and customers now to learn more about using uscreen make sure to sign up for a free trial with the link in the description below line number three is that affiliate marketing works on all these different platforms like clickbank pinterest TikTok, Etsy, Instagram, all the fancy new platforms that people wanna talk about. Again, this is clickbait. This is ways to get more views on content based on what people you know, think that they actually wanna see. So you see a ton of affiliate marketing videos when you search for it on ClickBank, how I made $500 a day in 24 hours. Shocking face, looking at a thing, right, with a little PayPal statement on the thumbnail. So really we have to realize that Affiliate marketing is dictated by search intent, which is people are actually searching for products that they want, right? They're searching for things like the best laptops, the best gaming laptops under $1,000, or the best golf clubs, best golf simulator, best right products that they're actually looking for because the, the person has to actually buy something from your affiliate link. So we can't just spam people on TikTok and expect them to go from TikTok to buy something or Pinterest to buy something. Right, we have to actually realize that affiliate marketing lives on search intent driven platforms, which is Google and YouTube, the two things that have been around for a really long time that people are actively searching for information on products. So that's the first thing. And the thing is, work is required to create blog posts and YouTube videos, right? Everyone has the dream that they're gonna create an Instagram account, post some pictures of themselves or like on a beach somewhere, and then think that through some type of affiliate marketing scheme, they're gonna promote hotels or offers or make a, make a bunch of money on a platform like TikTok or Instagram. That just doesn't exist. To make real like business money, like over $10,000 a month with affiliate marketing, it needs to be on Google primarily through a blog because that's where people search for products and information, or it can be on YouTube second. Both require real work. Both require you create actual articles or you create actual videos to do this, not just some hack on Pinterest or using ClickBank or Instagram or TikTok or something that seems cool and seems fast, but actually it doesn't work. Line number four from affiliate marketing gurus is that you can choose the perfect niche. Even if you have no experience in it, even if you've never heard about it, just because it's in some SEO report and it looks good, you can choose the perfect affiliate marketing niche and make a ton of money just because you chose that perfect niche. I get that question all the time. What's the most profitable one? Even if you had nothing to do with it, what would you actually start a blog on our YouTube channel? Is it luxury watches? Is it finance? Is it credit cards? Is it crypto? What is it? Well, here's the thing. You can't base an entire business on an SEO report. Right, We can't just look at hrefs and then make entire business decisions based on one thing. SEO reports are cool and then we can see what keywords we can potentially rank for and it's really valuable. But we need to realize that this is a real business. We need main you know, business drivers behind this, like the ability to pivot, the ability to build other revenue streams outside of just affiliate marketing. And that requires us not creating some tiny niche site in one tiny specific area, but a broader vision to create a bigger business. So for example, you can do this with a personal brand because a personal brand can be a website with your name on it. And through that, you can pivot into all 
kinds of different content, right? You can talk about different things. So for example, you could start in one broad niche and then niche down over time. And that allows you the freedom to pivot and not have to choose the perfect tiny niche, perfect website name at the beginning, because when we're beginners, it's a lot harder to do that. So for example, let's think about fitness, for example. I have students that have asked me about this. So they wanna start in fitness right? Fitness is very broad. It's kind of like saying health and wellness. So they were going to write articles about like the best fitness tips for beginners or how to become more physically fit. And I said, well, that's a super broad niche. niche. That's just too broad. What we have to do is sub niche down and write about things that have physical products that we can actually buy and make affiliate revenue from and also informational articles. So niche down, when I think about fitness, you could talk about an entire website or an entire, you know, silo of content around protein powder could be one the best for weight loss for weight gain for women vanilla chocolate flavors all of that you can write probably 30 to 50 articles just about protein powder itself or like intermittent fasting is another you know aspect of fitness or like back workouts build a bigger back right these are all sub niches within fitness now we don't have to choose the perfect niche at the beginning we don't have to say i'm going to create an intermittent fasting blog and then you call yourself the intermittent fasting guru.com because then what happens if you write a bunch of intermittent fasting content and none of it actually ranks right because that is a possibility if we go too narrow so we can start with a personal brand and we can do some articles on like protein powder. We can do a few on intermittent fasting. We can even do a few on workouts and then we just start to see what works. And when Google starts rewarding our content, we get out of the sandbox, then we can start honing in on what our actual sub niches are because you don't have to choose the perfect niche at the beginning. It's actually impossible. So really people want to choose just a random niche that's not attached to their identity. They don't want to put their face on the website. They just want to create some hyper specific SEO niche site based on an SEO report. And that is possible. I'm just saying that it is a lot harder to do that than actually giving yourself the freedom to pivot and choose and try different things. Now, people want to go into random niches, right? Now, you don't have to be an expert in the niche that you choose, but you should have some knowledge of it. That is actually an, an advantage to choosing the right keywords, to understanding new products that are coming out in the market that you can write about. So you can, you know, you want to go after something that you know some of, some stuff about. You don't have to be an expert, but you have to realize that, you know, this is a topic that I could write not just five articles on, but maybe 20, 30, 50, 100 over the course of the next year or two. Which brings us to line number five, and that is high ticket affiliate marketing is the only path to make money. So when we think about the math equation, back to that of affiliate marketing, we realize that, okay, we wanna have high commissions because we wanna make more money for every single affiliate sale that we generate. But that's not how affiliate conversion rates typically work. So yes, we can talk about, we can write about private jets and $20,000 watches and handbags and $30,000 things that are super expensive and get a 10% commission on that. So hey, every single commission that we get is gonna be higher. However, when we think about actual conversion rates, right, people actually clicking your affiliate link and then buying something, well, the truth is that the most popular mid-price point products are the ones that people convert on. So for example, if you're writing about like golf clubs or the best golf drivers, you don't wanna put the $2,000 insane golf driver in the number one spot and recommend that one is the best because it's not going to convert as high. The average reader, the internet is full of beginners. The average reader is not going to just click a $2,000, $5,000 thing and buy it automatically at the same rate as someone that's going to pick the popular mid price product. So what we have to realize is that it's not all about high ticket. Yes, it's good to have a few high ticket products within your niche. So for example, if it's golf, you could talk about golf drivers, clubs, irons, putters, all of those products. You could also talk about golf simulators, which are $20,000, $30,000 each. However, you can't expect to make all of your money from golf simulators because there's way more research when people are looking for expensive products. They're gonna be looking at different blogs, they're gonna be researching stuff, looking at YouTube videos before they buy. So the conversion rates are a lot lower on expensive products compared to you know, mid-tier popular products. So you know, in the software niche, for example, Typically software is like, you know, a normal plan monthly is like anywhere between $20, $30 up to $100 a month to $250 a month, right? So if it's a popular software product and it's $30 a month and it's the most popular in the, in the category, something like Shopify or Bluehost or Wix or something that tons of people know about, it's going to convert a lot higher than some random product that might, you might get a higher commission on, but no one knows about. So popularity actually leads to conversion rates. Now the easiest, most profitable affiliate marketing niches are 
physical products that a lot of people are searching for and aren't that competitive. So when we think about what's the most competitive stuff out there that's hard to rank for, it's things that like Forbes would write about. So technology, laptops, uh, finance, software, gadgets, even, th you know, they write about everything. We have Rolling Stone writing about blenders for crying out loud, right? There's tons of different things there. But what we could write about is like things that aren't as competitive. And we'll show you how to do that when we look at hrefs and look at actual keywords that we can rank for. But we have to realize that high ticket isn't everything. You need to diversify your revenue streams when it comes to affiliate marketing. So we can't just rely on one article to make us all our money. If I was just worried about a couple articles to make all the money for my business, I'd be really concerned if the rankings fluctuate or if there's a Google core algorithm update and we go up or down, it's like, that's too reliant on algorithms. So we need to one, diversify our affiliate programs. So we're ranking for lots of articles over lots of different sub niches with lots of different content if we wanna build a sustainable business, right? And then we also wanna have a plan to diversify our revenue outside of just affiliate marketing. So that's like ads, courses, sponsorships, lots of different revenue streams to create a diversified business. So high ticket can be a thing that you do and there should be a few articles that you can write around high ticket products in your niche. But again, it's not the best path to making real money with affiliate marketing. All right, so we covered the five lies. So what do we do? What do we do instead? Well, we have to realize this is a real business and you actually do need a website. That's another random bonus lie there is that you can start, you know, you search affiliate marketing without a website. You don't even need a website. You can do it for free. Um, you need a website. So to start a website, I recommend you do WordPress because that's basically the best content management system out there. WordPress.org. You could use a, a web hosting like WPX, which I recommend because they have super fast chat support, really good site speed. It's probably the easiest one to use. Most people out there recommend other older ones because they make more affiliate commissions, but I just recommend WPX. And you want to spend the first few weeks just really thinking about and planning your content strategy. So before you even create the site, you wanna think about doing this keyword research, figuring out you know, your strengths, your personal brand, what you have a little bit of knowledge on, what you could write 20 to 50 articles on over the next year or two. Really just start thinking about that and really planning. So let's get into a little bit of Ahrefs keyword research and understanding how to find different niches that we can write about when it comes to making affiliate revenue. So I'm in the Ahrefs keyword explorer. I'm gonna put in the word best, which signifies the search intent of somebody buying something. So we put in best. Best by itself doesn't really mean anything, but what if I put in like best patio? Best patio doesn't really mean anything by itself, but we're doing that because we wanna do the matching terms tool, which shows us every keyword out there that we could write an article about that includes the word best and patio and other keywords too. So we see there's things like best patio furniture, heater, umbrella, um, umbrella for wind, furniture covers, outdoor fans, plants, chairs. Look at all these really good keywords that we could write about with low difficulty scores. So keyword difficulty is a number from zero to 100 based on how difficult it is to rank, which meaning this, there's more authority sites, more links pointing to these other sites that already wrote the article. The lower the number, the better. So we can see that like there's basically 50 articles right here, uh, maybe 30 if we eliminate some that could be good articles to write if you're writing about things like outdoors, patio, barbecue, backyard parties, all of that kind of stuff. So there's a good just example of finding really easy keywords that you could rank for. I put in another one here, best sauna. So there's tons of sauna products, right, for affiliate revenue, and they're pretty expensive. You have home sauna, infrared, sauna blanket, outdoor, portable, at home, lots of different stuff here and that's really low competition. So that's another good one. And remember, we're always writing one article for one target keyword, but saunas is another good one. I put in another one here, best blender to find keywords. And we can see like best blender, bl smoothie blender. It looks more competitive though. Like best blender has a 50 keyword difficulty. Yeah, there's some random ones that we can find, but it's a little bit more competitive because like I said, all these big media sites are writing about it. If I click into it, I can see that these are the top 10 sites, but there's like Food Network, Good Housekeeping, New York Times, right? So some of these things based on technology are a little bit harder to rank for. So if it has a high keyword difficulty, you know that it's gonna be harder for you and you should probably avoid it. But there's also ways to find you know, easier opportunities that might be hidden in plain sight. So for example, I put in best camera. Now it looks really hard because it's like 59, best phone camera, 79, you know, digital camera, 61, really competitive, lots of sites. But there's a lot of different cameras. There's a lot of different keywords probably out there, longer tail keywords. So what if I drop the keyword difficulty to just under 20? So things that are actually easier to rank for. And we can see there's actually a lot of different camera articles and things that we could write for affiliate revenue, like best camera for YouTube, cellular trail camera, wired security camera. Those can be really expensive. 
cellular game camera, you know, camera for sports. There's literally tons and tons of articles, bird feeder camera, camera straps, motorcycle, beginner film. It just goes on and on. So if you drop that keyword difficulty down to a reasonable level, like under 20, you begin to find all these long tail keywords that you actually can make affiliate revenue on. But you'll see, it'll take a lot of articles to write, but you absolutely can rank for them. And the key is to cover one area really well and blanket that topical authority for it. And again, I put in best golf or cover the golf example, but it's super easy because it's just the easiest example. You can see here's like 20 to 30 articles that you could just immediately write and the keywords you could go after. Shoes, balls, clubs, bags, you know, range finder, shoes, irons, drivers, grips, all that stuff. We could even do like golf simulator and we can see how that one is. So we could say golf simulator for home, at home golf simulator, best projector for golf simulators, indoor golf simulators, budget golf simulators. So there's even, you know, 10 to 20 articles just in the golf simulator category that we could write. So if I wanted to become the golf simulator expert, I would write like 10 to 20 of these product based ones, right? Different types of products, home budget projectors, whatever you need. And then I create, you know, 50 probably informational articles about how to use the thing, how to set it up. Just be, you know, we want to have a lot of informational content to support these affiliate articles because that's another truth. We can't just write affiliate articles by themselves. We need supporting informational content and actually more of it than the affiliate articles themselves. So again, it's a numbers game. It takes time. It's not impossible. You just need to know how to spot the opportunities and know, you know, the strategy of actually what to do and how to write the content. So when it comes to actually writing the content, so we have a list of like 30 keywords. That should be the goal. When it comes to like writing the actual article, we have to realize you don't have to be Ernest Hemingway. You don't have to be an amazing writer. This is pretty much a science, not an art form. And there's a clear formatting and a way to write it in a way that Google likes and a way that AI likes. So you're gonna use AI when it comes to blogging, but maybe not how you think. So not like chat GPT or writing all the stuff for you. But what you can do is use a tool like Surfer SEO, which gives you all of the semantic keywords that should be in your article. So what they do is they scan like the top 30 ranking sites and they see, hey, here's all the different random words that they have in here. Since so Google can scan text and they are getting better and better at understanding the contextual relationship of every single word in the article, the links pointing to the article, internal links, all of that stuff. So it's more of a science than an art. What we need to do is create a standard operating procedure for your content creation. So you don't just sit there with a blank page and write the perfect article in the course of two weeks. We need a standard operating procedure, like what I call a content assembly line to create things a lot faster. So what you can do here is use like Surfer SEO or something like ClearScope, which gives you all of those keywords in a rating system so you know that your content's actually good for SEO and for the robots, right? And then you wanna write really good content for human beings. So that's things like interesting intros, hooks, statistics, things that people find interesting in the introduction and throughout the article. So we're writing for humans first, and then we wanna have good SEO scores as well. But it's more of a science than an art. So let's look at some examples. So for example, here's one on my site, just the 21 best online course platforms. So we have, you know, some keyword SEO stuff in here. Like we have the target keyword here in the first paragraph. We have a simple five column uh, section here. You can create something like this with like cadence or cadence blocks, really easy to just say, hey, put five columns here. This is an image base, this is text, this is a button. And you make it like that. Now you don't even need to create that at the very beginning. Yours can be all text based, but then we have you know, an introduction. So every blog post needs an introduction. So, you know, I have some statistics here, some internal links, some interesting stuff on our background. Uh, and that I have a video, which is helpful in, in the front, a little bit of an old video, as you see, <laughs> probably need to update that. Uh, then we have the first H2 heading, which is really important. So H1 is the title. The title is this, this is the H1, which is the most important, the title. And the second one is all the H2 headings. So the first, you know, the H2 should be what are the, plus your target keyword, best online course platforms. Then we lay it out in this format with H3 being the actual answers to the question. So this is an H3 heading, which is what Google likes to see. And then we lay it out. Now I created this section recently, right? This wasn't always here. In fact, I've updated this article a lot over the last couple of years. But then we just have a section with a little bit of information about the first brand, some pictures, their pricing plans, what people are saying about it, some features, the user interface, pricing, what I like and dislike, and then a button, right? And you can see this is pretty long because like, again, I've updated this a lot over the course of the years, but then there's a button, then there's number two, and it's the exact same format down the list for every single product, right? This is a science, not an art. It's a way to do it and in the same way every single time. So we wanna have good experience based stuff on the products 
and it's formatted the right way. So we can see a couple other examples like um, this is by jessicalaw.com. She's one of our blog coaches. Seven best SERP tracking tools according to SEO experts. So the design's always gonna look a little bit different, but the same principles will apply. There's an introduction, there's the H2 and H3 headings with the right products in the right places, images, key features, pricing, and all of that information that people wanna see when making their actual decision. So we're compiling information on these products so that people can compare and look at stuff. So when people are searching for best products, they're looking for comparative search intent. They're not ready to go to that product yet and buy it right away. They need a blogger to be, be the intermediary between that search and that actual purchase. And affiliate links is what does it. But you can see it's the same kind of thing where it's, here's the company, here's some pictures, information about it, what we think, the bottom line, and a button to go to the next one. Here's another student of ours, mindforsurvival.com. So survival gear, things that are less competitive to rank for, and it's a really good site. The best emergency sleeping bag. Again, the design's gonna be different, but the same principles apply. There's an introduction, a table of contents, information about what are the best emergency sleeping bags, and then a list of the products pictures and buttons to check out the products with affiliate links. And these are Amazon affiliate links as well. Then we have another one with uh, another one of our coaches, Eddie. So he's got one here on the six best credit monitoring services. Again, the style is a little bit different. The color is a little bit different. We want to have clear black text on a white background with short paragraphs, easy to read, easy on the eyes, good introduction. He's got some formatting stuff here, table of contents, what are the best? So we're answering questions for Google and this is the way to actually do it. I learned this working for tech companies in 2019 and you know it hasn't changed at all. This is how Google likes to see content formatted in the exact same way. So if, if every single word in an affiliate article was like paragraph text and it was all this, Google would have a hard time understanding what this is all about. So this is a way with the H1 title, H2, in the form of questions around the keyword and H3 headings with the answers to actually write the best content and that Google actually understands. So again, it's the same kind of content, the same principles apply. So this is about you know, creating a standard operating procedure to write articles around affiliate products. And maybe you start the article in the middle and something that you understand and you talk about the features, you write that, and then maybe you write the introduction and conclusion last, right? So there's a clear way to do this. And a lot of questions I get like, do I have to use the products? Do I have to actually buy the products to understand them? Well, this is where your niche expertise comes in. If you do actually have used some of this stuff, that can be more helpful because Google is rewarding more and more human experience-based content, especially in the last like 12 months, right? So four years ago, perfect like SEO content, just like perfect on Surfer SEO and clear scope, all the keywords in the right places, perfect formatting. That would work really well. But now it's like we need human experience and actually using this stuff. Now, do you have to buy everything? No, actually the truth is most sites, big media sites don't actually like use every single product that they write about online. Now that is kind of a moral issue and it is the truth of the internet unfortunately is that most people just kind of compile information from Amazon and reviews and other blogs and the company's website to create the best possible review that they can. That's true of most articles, I would say. However, if you can add some human experience in there, it can really help. But we see this is more of a science than an art form. We just have to create a process for creating a lot of different affiliate articles. So we talked about keyword research, how to actually find opportunities, realizing that we have to write a good amount of articles to make money, realizing that we have to create a lot of content and a similar approach to make good affiliate revenue. So let's talk about actually affiliate monetization, how to actually monetize this stuff. We need to realize that affiliate marketing is simply a byproduct of your content and link building efforts. So to make a real affiliate marketing business happen, you need to get a lot of traffic or views on YouTube videos. We're talking specifically about blogging in this video, but it's a byproduct of content and link building to actually get that traffic. Because affiliate marketing is really easy. You create the content with just simple links, no affiliate links in your content, then once you actually start ranking by writing good articles, updating the content, maybe doing some link building, then your article starts ranking on page one of Google, then you simply just swap out the homepage links or the product links for affiliate links, sit back and relax. So that part's really easy. It's the actual ranking that's the tough part. Now everyone, that's why people talk about TikTok and Instagram and these things that seem easier, but really no one is buying a ton of affiliate products on Instagram. Tell me the last time that you did that. You know, you found an influencer that you liked and she was promoting something or he, and you clicked on something, bought it. Now 
it can be true, but you need to build a huge following and shoot tons of videos and pictures for that to happen. Same thing with TikTok. They really limit the amount of outbound links you can even put on TikTok accounts. They want to keep people on the platforms, not through affiliate links, which is why you need a website. You need to rank content on Google and on YouTube to actually make real affiliate revenue, which actually takes time. And there's really nothing passive about it. But rem you know, remember, that is actually OK. If we want to build a business, we can't just sit back and do nothing. Another truth is you need to join a lot of affiliate programs, not just one or two that people say on YouTube. Like I did this one program with ClickBank, I did this hack and then I made a bunch of money. That's not how a real business works. You need to aim to join like 20 affiliate programs, 30 affiliate programs. I've joined over 300 affiliate programs for my blog, adamandfro.com over the last four years. So am I making money for all of them? No, actually most of them aren't making that much money. You make money through your top 10 mostly, but to build a real business, you need this diversification. You know, you need to rank for a lot of articles, not just one or two. So affiliate marketing is actually easy. It's the getting, you know, eyeballs and attention on your stuff for product-based searches. That is the hard part. But you can do it. You just have to know how to find the keyword opportunities, how to create the content, and then just do it in a consistent way based on your personal brand and pivot so that you don't have to quit. Um, so here's what you basically do. You can write these articles for these best transactional affiliate keywords and just add in homepage links or product links, no affiliate links yet. So you wanna build topical authority in that area. So again, if we're writing about saunas, we wanna write 10 articles about all those different products. And then we also wanna write 20 to 30, 40 articles just about informational content around it, how to use it, tips, you know, how long to be in there, whatever those informational keywords are that you can also find with Ahrefs, so you write those. You know, work on getting some backlinks. This is the biggest thing that bloggers and affiliate marketers are scared of is like actually doing some outreach and getting backlinks because it's kind of scary. Like we can just sit behind our computers and write affiliate articles all day. But if you don't get any backlinks and your domain rating is zero, it's gonna be hard to start getting traffic. So that's why I always recommend just start doing link building immediately. I have other videos on that, but just start doing it right away when your website's up. You don't have to wait till you have like 10 or 20 articles or anything like that. So if you get some backlinks, you start updating your articles, you know, making them a little bit better, rewriting the intro for human beings, adding a few more products to that list, making it better, looking at the competition, seeing is mine as good as this? Is it as long as in depth? Is it better or worse? And just going from there. Then once you're getting traffic, that's when you can actually monetize with affiliate links. So then you search for the affiliate programs, you join them, you swap out the links. You can use a tool like Thirsty Affiliates, which organizes and categorizes all your affiliate links in one place. And it's really simple. Then you can just make sure to monetize the top three, at least of an article that's ranking. You can monetize them all over time, but the priority is to monetize the top three products that you're writing about in a specific article. Then you can always negotiate. You know, I have more advanced affiliate marketing videos on negotiation, which is a major part of affiliate marketing. So you can get uh, higher commission rates. Let's say you could go from 8% to 12 or 15% by having a conversation with affiliate managers. If you're in the power position and you're ranking for content, that you, you can then get a better IO or what's called an insertion order or contract to make higher commissions than the general public can. Now you have to realize this is a real business, right? So you have to treat it as such. It's not overnight. Also, don't be lazy. Don't sign up for just Amazon. You can start with Amazon because it has everything, but you also wanna diversify and join the actual programs themselves. So if you're writing about the best basketball hoops, start with Amazon put links in there, but then you can join things like Dick's Sporting Goods or other programs to get higher commission rates than Amazon. So ultimately, in the end, that's a lot of information, but YouTubers and gurus, they think you're lazy. They think you don't want to actually work on a business. They think you wanna make passive income overnight, which is why when you search for affiliate marketing on YouTube, you get a ton of bad advice. So if you wanna treat it like a real business, make a real business for yourself. I don't care what kind of business it is, but the way to make you know six figures to seven figures over time is by building a business for yourself. And you totally can do it, you just need to know how. So if you're interested in learning more, how I did it, how I built my blog to seven figures, make sure to click the link in the description below, sign up for my masterclass, 80 minutes of free training. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.